Hello guys, it is Friday, which means I am doing my championship score predictions for match day 14. As always, this weekend's predictions will be in the description down below, meaning you can pause the video and leave your score predictions if you wish and if you want a chance for a shout out. I'm really excited to predict this weekend's fixtures because we saw a very dramatic midweek. We saw Barnsley picking up on the waypoint. We've seen Nottingham Forest lose two in the bounce now. And we saw Josh Brownhill picking up a 98th minute winner. All of that will be discussed later in the video. If you like what you see and you want to see more championship content, please make sure before you see this, give this video a like, a share and a subscribe. All of that will be tremendously appreciated. But without any further ado, let's begin with my school predictions for this weekend's games. So we're going to go for the early Saturday kickoff for Yorkshire Derby, Sheffield Wednesday versus Leeds. No doubt one of the games I'm going to be keeping my eye on. It is third versus second in the current table and if any side were to win, they could be in the automatic promotion places and potentially first if West Brom drop points this weekend. I was moderately impressed with Sheffield Wednesday actually, my only disappointment is that they didn't score more than one goal. Luongo managed to capitalise on a really bad mistake from Lee and Lindsay. Adam Reach and Kadim Harris I thought both had a terrific game in that game. With Leeds, they grinded a point against a tough Preston side. Their same problems looked like that they were going to be fulfilled through in, without the game, not being able to score their many chances. But it was eventually Nketiah who was the difference following a free kick and a great looping header which sank Preston's heart. Leeds have a pretty strong record against their Yorkshire rivals though, but having said that, Bielsa's Leeds have lost twice against Gary Monk last year, when he was manager for Birmingham City of course. And with the game being played at Hillsborough, I say Wednesday do have a slight chance in this. Of course Monk's going to be facing his former club, so the atmosphere could be really really tense for him, especially as he had a very underwhelming time at Leeds. I think the first goal is going to be very key in this game, but as a prediction I think Sheffield Wednesday will have a 2-1 home victory. If Leeds start with Enketia, I may consider changing the scoreline, but I think Bielsa will stay stubborn and I think Monk's great record against Bielsa will continue with a 2-1 home victory. So now to the 3 o'clock, the first one, Birmingham versus Luton. Both teams facing contrasting results in midweek. Birmingham managed to edge past Blackburn by one goal to nil. It was a very nicely crafted goal, with Cowley passing to Velabra, who did a lovely flick back to Cowley, who did a fantastic cross, and then Colin managed to head the book cross with power. I think Birmingham did deserve the win. They did have the better chances, especially in the second half. Jukovic managed to hit the bar in the second half. If that had gone in, that would have been probably the goal of the season. It was just an outrageous effort, and it was really unlucky it didn't go in. Luton, on the other hand, had a really tough defeat to take against Fulham. They didn't start well after Pearson made a terrible back pass, which set up Mitrovic's first goal. But Luton were two down, but they did not give up without a fight. Potts managed to get them back into it following a fantastic free kick by Izzy Brown. I think he's been really, really important for Luton so far this season. However, Pearson and Bradley just simply could not deal with Mitrovic, who scored a hat-trick to finish the job. They did get a consolation goal after a ter terrific run by Luke Bolton, providing a simple tapping for Lua Lua. I think this game will be really, really close, but with Birmingham being at home, you can almost expect them to pick up three points in this game. But with how unpredictable Luton Town are, and with the attacking threat that they do have, I wouldn't write them off in this game. I think I've got an instinct. I'm mainly going to predict a 2-1 away victory to Luton. It seems Luton bounced back well after defeat. And they managed to pick up some great victories already away from home. So I think this will be the next one. And I think Luton will win. But a very interesting game regardless of the outcome. Now we have Huddersfield versus Burnley. 22nd versus 24th. Both of these sides are sitting in the relegation zone at the moment, but a win for either side can provide great momentum for them going forward. Huddersfield played out a stalemate against Middlesbrough. A rather disappointing perf home performance, I'd say. Pierce was not really troubled in the Middlesbrough goal, but the 19-year-old keeper, Schofield for Huddersfield, had to make a stunning save to limp Huddersfield for a draw in the end on his debut. Barnsley had the best performance since the start of the season, managing to hold the current leaders, West Brom, to a 2-2 draw at the Hawthorns. Cooley would you manage to score a brace? The first one being a header, which he'll have Kavar to thank. Wow. He made an outstanding run to provide him with the ball and with him to head the goal in the end, but his second goal was a lot more spectacular. This was provided by the captain, Alex Moat. And Woodrow scores his second goal from outside the box this season since doing the same against Charlton. Woodrow could have even had a hat-trick with more work from Caver, and his header was not as convincing but it hit the crossbar. However, they gave away two cheap goals by simply running out of energy where defensively 
Barnsley should have done better with both goals. I don't anticipate a lot of goals in this game, actually. I think this will be a very cagey game. I don't think this will be a stalemate, but I think this will be a 1-1 draw. I, it'll make sense for Barnsley to go ahead in this game and then throw it away. But I'm intrigued of the outcome in the game, so 1-1 draw? Let me know what you think in the comments. Next up is Hull versus Derby. Both teams managing to pick up a win in their midweek game. Hull having a fantastic away victory against High Flying Nottingham Forest. Hull started tremendously well and deservedly took the lead after Josh McGinnis managed to poke a Toral shot past Zamba. In the start of the second half, Hull continued to impress. Terrific work from Grzycki, a great pass by Toral, who took a couple of defenders on and then managed to square it for Bone for an easy tap-in. There was no doubt that Forrest were going to respond. It was The question was if Hull could hold on, and if so, for how long? And they did. McGuinness did manage to get sent off for the second time this season for a very dangerous challenge of Ben Watson, though. But luckily for Hull, they managed to cope with the man down. Derby got a far from convincing performance again. They were actually under a lot of threat against Wigan under Jamal Lowe, who forced Roos into a couple of really good saves. However, Graham Shinney managed to score an absolute beauty in stoppage time. A terrific first goal for Derby and hopefully many more to come. Hull have a very, very poor record against Derby though. But if I have to base a win on the team which is playing the best football right now, it is Hull. And I actually think Hull will get a very rare... 2-0 home victory against Derby. If this were to happen, I could see Koku being under tremendous pressure. But a very interesting game indeed. Next up is Middlesbrough versus Fulham. Both teams collecting contrasting results. Borough had a very poor 0-0 draw against Huddersfield, but they would feel that they should have won the game. With Ashley Fetcher missing an absolute sitter. The amount of time he had was astonishing. I might have been able to score that. Fulham, by contrast, had plenty of goals, scored by the main man, Alexander Mitrovic, who simply had a man-of-a-match performance against Luton, scoring his first hat-trick in England. Middlesbrough just seemed to be allergic to scoring goals at the moment, which has put them one point above the relegation zone, so every game is starting to become a must-win for Borough and Jonathan Woodgate. Fulham just see themselves outside the playoffs and goal difference, so they'll be desperate to grab something from this game. I think this will be a 2-0 away victory for Fulham, but a game that can really go either way. Next up is Millwall versus Stoke. This will be Gary Rowett's first game in charge as the new Millwall manager. And who better to face the team that sacked him last year? Likewise with Monk, Rowett I expect will get a very tense atmosphere as he practically drove Stoke to be eager promotion winning team to a mediocre team for the championship. Mill had a gutsy performance against Cardiff who fell behind twice but managing to come back twice. Bradshaw scored a brace, his first was after a pass from Romero, and his strike was not clean but it managed to get through the net. His second was very coolly taken after Cardiff basically gifted Millwall to come back to this game. Stoke lost against Sheffield Wednesday, but they did have chances, including one from Lee Gregory, which somehow Dawson managed to keep out, and they did lose in the end by a defensive error. Nathan Jones would need to cut out these errors if Stoke want to continue their decent run of form. I can see this game being really, really tense, focused around Rowett, but I think Rowett will get the final laugh, and I think we'll get a 2-1 home victory against his former club. But I'm not holding back for Stoke to cause an upset, though. So now in Nottingham Forest versus Reading, both teams failing to win in midweek. Forest had their second defeat on the bounce losing to Hull City, where they just simply didn't wake up until the second half, where Matty Cash scored very soon after Bowen scored Hull's second. Forrest tried to equalise but ultimately lacked a cutting edge to improve the result. Reading had a very good away point against Queen's Park Rangers, a very end-to-end -end game where Ejari had another outstanding game. He provided a defence-splitting pass which allowed Puskas to end his goal drought. Swift provided the cross for Reading's second goal which the ball pinballed for Bulldog to score. As we know in the Championship, any team can be anyone so I'm not writing either team off here. Forest's mentality will be heavily tested whether they can respond to their back-to-back -back defeat. I think this game has the ability to end to 1-0 Forest, but Reading will not be out of this game for sure. Now to Preston versus Blackburn, both teams having varying results in midweek. Preston were held to a 1-1 draw versus Leeds. In the first 75 minutes, their game plan was spot on, and Maguire made a brilliant run down the right and squared it to Barkusen, who momentarily put Preston second. 
This was ultimately denied by Nketiah, but it was a very brave performance by Preston regardless. Blackburn, on the other hand, had the complete opposite and lacked a cutting edge against Birmingham. I don't recall Camp being too alert in his goal, and I really fear for Blackburn at the moment. Them, alongside with Borough and Barnsley, have not picked up a win in their last five games. They don't have an easy trip against their Lancastrian rivals, and I think Preston will win, but it'll be by three goals to two. An entertaining game, but an edge for Preston since they are at home. Now with West Brom versus Charlton. This will be the final game where Lee Bowyer is on his touchline ban, and I think he'll be desperate to be back on the touch tonight after this game. West Brom had an arguably bad game against Barnsley where the first half was really, really poor. However, despite not playing well, they grinded out a somewhat positive result in the game with Diaby scoring an own goal from an in-swinging corner and Pereira managing to nod the ball after a Townsend cross. Charlton had a very dramatic game against Bristol City. They went 1-0 up after McCauley born in fortunate circumstances where Burnley had an absolute nightmare. However, they lost the game after Jeju, who got sent off later on, and their tired events failed to pick up Josh Brownhill, who finished Charlton off in the 98th minute. Wow. This game will be another close game with West Brom having a very strong home record and Charlton having a very encouraging season so far. I think this will be a 1-1 draw, a very tough game to call in my opinion. So now we have two Sunday games for some bizarre reason. First off we have the Welsh Derby, Swansea versus Cardiff. The last time these two sides played each other was in the Premier League in 2014. But this is the first Wales derby in the championship for over seven years. So I'm excited this fierce rivalry has returned to the championship. Swansea had a terrible game against Brentford, which I can only put it as blunt as possible. They were simply blown out of the park for 90 minutes in all positions. The performance was summed up by Jake Bidwell's own goal. Cardiff had a very good away performance against Mill, however they must feel they should have won the game. Bilkowski had a very good game in Millwall goal and they cheaply gave away their second goal and they went ahead twice. Swansea are now win this in 3 and are now 10th and have dropped out of the top 6 and now Cardiff are only 4 points behind them and could potentially narrow it down to 1 with a positive result. Swansea have talent, there's no denying that, but since baston has been out the squad they've really struggled to score goals. As for Cardiff, I'm still not convinced with Glaxel, but I've been really impressed with Josh Murphy recently. I'm predicting a 2-1 away victory for Cardiff. This should be a firecracker, a really end-to-end -end game, I think. The Pinalto game this weekend is Bristol City versus Wigan. City managed to play out a dramatic game against Charlton. They kept their tails up when they got behind, and John Sabrini Jeju on seemed to work, even though he did get sent off later on by absolutely silly behaviour from him. The positive response carried on to the very last minute and Ashton Gate went berserk when Bran Hill scored that goal. Who knows how significant that goal could be for Bristol City in the future. Wigan lost against Derby but they shouldn't be disgruntled. They had a terrific performance and had plenty of chances. Jamal Lowe could have even had a hat-trick with the chances he had and Kelly Ruse probably had his best game for Derby this season. They disappointingly lost in stoppage time but I was very encouraged by their performance, especially away from home. However, Bristol City, in my opinion, are a different kettle of fish in quality, and I think Bristol City should win by two goals to nil, but I think it'll be a very entertaining game, very end-to-end, -end, I think. Final game this weekend is Queen's Park Rangers versus Brentford. Mark Warburton facing his former club, of course. Queen's Park Rangers recently had an okay performances, but they have given me a little concern defensively. Brentford have been, been playing their best football at this point, with three wins out of five. Queen's Park Rangers played out a draw against Reading, which was the fair result. Wells and Hugo combined, scoring terrific goals, and Hugo scoring a terrific goal for the second. Brentford had a very good game against Swansea, a 3-0 away victory and a clean sheet. Not a lot went wrong for them. A brilliant goal from Ben Rama, who's been quite quiet so far this season. I already discussed about Bidwell's own goal, and Mbumio, who scored after a poor back pass from Swansea. I think this will be a good pick for Monday Night Football. I think there'll be a, many goals in this game. And I think based on form, I'm going to give Brentford a 3-2 away victory. I feel more confident in Brentford defensively, but this should be a cracking game. But there you have it, guys. These are my championship score predictions for match day 14. There are my predictions on the screen right now. All of these weekend's games are being in the description down below. So you can leave a prediction if you so wish. Obviously, one right and your channel will be getting a shout out. 
This will wrap it up. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more championship content, like I said at the start of the video, make sure you give the video a like. It is massively appreciated. Also, make sure to subscribe and share the channel for more championship content. I've got a few more videos planned, so stay tuned for that. But apart from that, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm now going to buy a Tetris football shirt inspired by Luton. You guys are legendary if you saw the end of the video. And as always, enjoy your championship football and take care.